Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm doing this intro after having filmed everything else because I realised I did not introduce the video, like, at all. So, you know, here's a video. So, back in November 2023, I got three arcs when I was at Yalk. And you know what? I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna read them all in this vlog. Well, I have read them and you'll soon find out what I thought about them, but for the sake of this intro, I'm gonna go read them right now! Right now! Hi! Um, so I just finished this book. Um, it's not called that. It's called Goddess Crown, and I'm gonna butcher the name, but Shane Lapit? Lapit? Um, Shade. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Shade at least, because I think the Twitter account is like the shady files. So, yeah. Anyway, what was this about? Wow, I just finished it and I've completely forgotten about it. That's a d brain. Oh, how is my memory nowadays? Anyway, um, so the girl, the girl whose name, um, it's not on the back, but I can't pronounce it. So it's spelled K A L O T H I A. So. Colothia? Colothia? Clo I don't know. Anyway, her. It's a girl. <laughs> I'm just going to refer to her as her or the girl or something like that because um, that name is making me weird. <laughs> Not making me weird, but I can't pronounce it. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. So it's. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling off. I'm feeling off. Okay. Anyway, so. Her, the girl, she has uh, grown up in a compound in the forest, uh, basically because she's been told that uh, her parents did something, said something against a king, so basically they're being hunted and to keep her safe and not be like on the run, um, she's grown up on this compound in the middle of the forest, not close to anyone, so she's had um, Auntie, we don't know anything about her besides her, she's called Auntie, and then we have Teacher, and we have Claret, which is uh, her bodyguard, and then we have, what's his name? N N Nasir? Captain Godmain, Nasir, um, <clears throat> which is, he's basically, he's not there a lot, he comes and goes, but he is basically the in charge of her safety. So he comes and goes again, um, so Claret is the one that's, you know, keeping her safe on a day-to-day -day basis. And then she has, um, I guess a patron is a, a good enough explanation or for him, but it's Lord Godmain, so Lord Godmain is um, Captain Godmain Nasir's dad. Um, it's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, those are the only people she knows about, who she's, you know, interacted uh, with in her, I want to say, like, 16 years of life. So, basically, um, there's an attack, and more or less everyone dies. Auntie, teacher, Claret, everyone dies, and she's like, okay. Um, <laughs> eventually she meets up with Nasira, who um, is also presumed dead for a little bit. Um, and she meets up with all these other women who's on the way to um, Port Caspin, which is where the uh, the castle is the big, it's like the main city, I suppose. Uh, but it didn't always used to be, but it is now. Um, so, basically, because it says your presence is requested at the Royal Court of, I, I think it's supposed to be Gala, but also it could be Gaja. The double L is making me think it's a J. I don't know. But the, here, <laughs> the court of here. Um... So the king is dead and all that, so basically there's no heir to the throne and um, well, you find out pretty early on that uh, she's the heir to the throne, she's the missing princess, so the parents uh, she thought were, you know, still alive somewhere uh, was actually, you know, the king and queen. 
Yes. So there's this whole court mystery, basically. Um, she she needs to figure out if she wants to take the throne and all that and basically the uh lords of the court so there's a uh, lord of the north which is lord godmain which is basically her only ally and then there's the lord of the east the west and then the south and basically they're all against her <laughs> uh, so she's not having an easy job of the thing. That's really all I can say about the book without saying the whole book but I mean just saying that is a lot. I basically I wouldn't even have mentioned the missing princess part had it not said like all this on the uh on the cover. Basically this is not the actual cover. I think this is, let's see if it can focus, this is supposed to be the cover, so this is an arc, obviously. I will say this before I say anything uh, else negative about it, because I have some negative things to say, but it's, uh, it's, it's not really negative, it's more like mini critique, but um, I liked it. I liked it well enough to want to um, pick up the finished copy, even though I'm not really a big fan of the cover here. Also, see what else this author comes up with. So I don't know if... Um, so I'll, I'll say this, this book ends in a way that it could be just a standalone, but also it could be... there could be a sequel. Um, so I don't know. I do know that the author has another title on the way, uh, but I, I don't know more about that because it just says untitled. Um, also, <laughs> no, that's a different time. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, I will pick up the finished copy and I'll check out the author again. Um, so I joined it that much. Anyway, so uh, on the back here, it says it's a YA romanticy. I have words to say about it. So yes, it is a YA. Um, the girl is like 16, 17-ish. Um, so yeah, H White is YA. Written wise, it's more like a lower YA towards middle grade level of the whole thing. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but uh, don't go into the book presuming it's like big time YA because it's more towards lower YA middle grade writing than anything else. Um, I enjoyed it still, so I mean, to me that's not a bad thing, it just makes it a lot more easier to read, so, you know, bonus. Um, <laughs> that. But then the romanticy aspects of the, the thing it says here, so, for it to be a romanticy, there has to be romance and there has to be fantasy. Now I want to object to both of these things. <laughs> so whoever m is marketing it as a romanticy, I I I wanna have a chat with you. Camera died. Um, I really do need to, you know, get better batteries. Um, so I'm gonna try to make this quick because I just quickly charged it a bit, and I think it's gonna die again. Anyway, where was I? Um. Romance. So there's little to no romance in it. Um, the only time there's really romance is like in the last like 50 pages or so where it's like hinted at, not really acted upon. Um, it's very, it's it's more middle grade romance there than it is YA romance because YA romance can go nuts, but still, yeah. And then fantasy aspect. So. <laughs> I want to say there's little to no fantasy things in it as well because most of the book is pretty much um, girl in forest. I want to say jungle but forest is what is the word that's been used. Um, going through like muddy towns. I, it's, I, ah, it's very little fantasy aspect. The only like fantasy aspect is um, that, uh, so there's a goddess, they have a goddess in this place um, and she shows up and is like hello and then goodbye. Um, there's not a lot of fantasy besides that and if there are I totally missed it. 
but that's basically the fancy aspect uh, it's this goddess popping up every now and again and it's i think it's like three or four times so it's not a lot <laughs> it's not a lot and it's like for five seconds so sure if you want to call it a ya romancy go ahead but i i want to object to that but sure sure i'm i'm okay with it <laughs> um except for the fact that i basically had issues with it obviously well hello finished another book so this one is lily's just fine by jill stewart um one thing though so i can't really i'm, I'm not sure i want to call it an arc or not because if i go on goodreads as we do um so there is a book called lily's just fine uh galloway's Galloway Girls number one, which is, well, yeah, you can see Galloway Girls, um, and it said says it came out in twenty nineteen. It does have a different cover, um, so I don't know. And there's also a book number two called Gemma's Not Sure, uh, which came out in twenty twenty. Now I don't know. Um, so there are. They are on a different publishing company, so I don't know if it's being like republished or what's up. But um, this particular cover, without the like uncorrected proof bit, um, there is also a thingy for that, and it says it it's published April fourth, twenty twenty four. So I I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not sure it matters at all. Um, I do know that uh, sometimes at uh, Yalk in particular and sometimes in other places they will give out like older uncorrected uh, proofs or arcs um, just in giveaway. So this is, I mean I got this in a giveaway so I can't really say much there. I don't know uh, the specifics of if it's been republished in a different publi publishing house or what's up. Actually it doesn't really matter does it but read this one uh and if there is a book two uh i will want to read that actually so we have a uh, dual yeah dual pov so we have uh lily title character um so basically she is a fixer as it were so she she's a doer she will get things done even if she like has to bully people into getting things done um that's just what she does she gets gets something in her head and she just gets it done and then we have tom who's who just sort of like he goes along with things he i mean he he get things done in his own way I suppose but he's not like I want to do this and I'm gonna get down now like Lily is so Lily's like head on she just decides and then makes it happen um she's a force to be reckoned with let's say that <laughs> Lily Lily's family so she's uh, one of the richer family so she has like she lives in the best house she she has everything she could ever want uh whereas tom is i mean he has everything he wants as well he just um he, he doesn't come from that rich family so it's a bit more cramped in his house rather than in lily's where it's basically she has a mansion for herself not really but almost lily's boyfriend uh kind of dumps her and she's like all right cool <laughs> she moves on and like the next day she's like taking on another like big project and she decides that uh the city committee is the next project so uh the city they're from they have this like gala thing every year and basically <laughs> um I think it's like for a week or something or it's just it ends up being a week i'm not too sure on the details there but um basically a lot of things happen and uh, lily decides that well the the committee is like basically just a bunch of old people so she's like well they need new blood they say they need new blood she brings in a couple of people like the younger teens and um 
basically starts to take over. Not long after she's kind of kicked off, um, <laughs> forcibly kicked off, she walks out. Um, but there's still a lot of like things uh, in the back stages, so she sort of like um, makes things happen that the committee and the city doesn't really know about until it happens. Um, it's a lot. I think she she uses this whole thing as an escape, but she doesn't really like realize it's an escape. So if we back up a bit, so we know from the start that Tom's sister basically has she had she's she's sick in a way. Um, so it's basically she's I, I'm not sure they mention it. Do they mention it? Uh, but basically it's. Um, she's exhausted all the time basically that and then we have Lily and Lily she has an older sister and an older brother but they've grown up and moved out and her dad is in some form of business so he's like off and gallivanting across the world so it's basically just Lily and her mum now her mum we don't see a lot of her in the beginning we sort of like pick up the pieces of trailing uh, what <laughs> the, the crumbs along the way later on but basically her mum is thoroughly depressed i think in a way lily taking on all these projects is sort of her way to escape her home life because even though it may look on the outside that she has like all these she has the best house in town and all that um it's not a perfect life like a lot of the time her brother her sister and her dad have sort of just like they, they've known it from before she had like uh, her mum had like postpartum depression and all that uh and so the the older siblings and the dad knew from that before but they hadn't really told lily about it so lily is not picking up the signs of the depression signs in that way and then at the same time the the siblings and the dad they've sort of like just shoved their mum and wife onto Lily to take care of and she's like she's a teenager her mum should be taking care of her even though she's almost grown up but Lily's not supposed to be the one that's taking care of her mum and she's sort of gained that responsibility in a off off-winded way and it's so very much unfair on Lily I think um because there's there's moments they have like chats and they're like why haven't you done this for your mama why haven't you done that and it's like dude you haven't even told Lily that her mum has suffered these depressive episodes in the past why are you putting all these like heavy challenges on Lily to begin with I, I mean it's rude and it's not supposed to be on Lily. I actually really liked it. It was, um, it's definitely a summer read. It has some like heavy topics like the, uh, the depression and all that and, uh, that there's events when you're like, what the fuck, this girl is a teenager, she should not be going through these things. So some heavy topics, yes, um, but also very cute in its own way. Um, I think all the topics were actually handled in a very good way that like explains what's happening and what it is. Um, so I'm actually curious to see what this so-called second book should be and wow some neighbor just banged their door i don't know if you picked that up or not but i definitely heard it anyway i don't know about the whole publishing thing 2019 2024 anyway um yeah for me this particular book is an arc so <laughs> i don't know if any of that made any sense but there we go i do have one more book to read so i'll be back when i've read that obviously oh my good golly goddess i don't even know what i just said oh my goodness i had no idea this kind of book existed well technically it doesn't quite exist yet but it, because it hasn't come out yet but 
it's soon, it's soon, and I'm gonna tell you this before I tell you what it's about, go pre-order it and thank me later. The Love Interest by Helen Cummerf Cummerford? Yes. <laughs> um, where do I even begin? Honestly, I, I'm, I'm in awe, I'm in shock, I'm in love. <laughs> with the love interest. In this universe here, heroes and villains exist. As in the superheroes, you know, Marvel, DC, whatever, villains, same kind of deal. They exist. <laughs> it's a bloody good time. Our main character, Jenna Ray, What's her name? Honestly. It is said that in the year 2024, a new hero will emerge in Nine Trees, an event that is usually accompanied by a catastrophic disaster. When Blaze, the new hero, does arrive, Jenna has the misfortune of being the first person he saves. And in the eyes of the public, that means one thing, Jenna Ray has already been cast as the love interest. <laughs> So basically, um, in the eyes of the world, Jenna Ray is now the love interest of the new hero, Blaze. Not exactly what she wanted in life, but it still happened. And then one day she is approached by the contact person of the villains, and basically they want her to spy on the heroes. Drama! Honestly, I had such a good time reading this book. Uh, I, I literally cannot wait until the actual book comes out, which I believe is June 6th, which by the way is the day after my birthday, so guess what I'm getting myself? It's the book I didn't know I needed until I read it, and now I just want more of it. And the good thing about that is, apparently, Jenna Ray will return, so there is a book two in the cards, I believe, at least. That is what it says on the back. Jenna Ray will return. Honestly though, I've now read three arcs or pre-something copies. I'm gonna call them arcs just for the sake of it. All from like authors I've never heard of and maybe books I didn't necessarily would have just reached for had I just spotted them. And I've had a bloody good time with all of them. I mean, this was, this was a high note to end on, I'm not gonna lie, this was a high note. <laughs> it wasn't even planned. How does that work? I don't know. Honestly, Helen Comerford has now, like, been put on, like, the list of authors I must always keep my eye out for. Oh, now I just want to go back to Yalk and get more arcs because, yeah, that's apparently where I get them from. Because that whole you know, contacting publishers and stuff. I know you can do that, but I feel awkward. So doing that will make me feel very awkward doing it and, you know, getting a rejection or, you know, not getting an answer at all will make me cringe over myself. It doesn't make any sense. But, you know, just going down a convention and being handed a knock, yes, please. <laughs> I will take it. I will take it very well. Anyway, I think this is, well, I don't think, I know this is the end of this video because I literally have no more arcs to read and this was an arc reading vlog, so there we go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye-bye.